Beam down smoke. Throughout the short period of time that I've uploaded on this channel, many people have requested a live investing. Unfortunately, I have never had a good chance to honor that video request with a good video format. However, that has changed now with Investment Odyssey. At this point, you're probably wondering, what exactly is this series? Well, it's actually going to be a sister series to my Trading Adventure series. That's why it's called Investment Odyssey, and the other one's called Trading Adventure. And it's basically going to be a series where I go through investing decisions, and I make investments live on each of these episodes. There will be episodes every two weeks on Thursday, so it's a bi-weekly series. And every single time, we're going to have a budget of around $50 to $100, depending on how the market is actually doing. If the market's doing good, we'll spend more money. If the market's doing not as good, we'll spend less money. And we're going to spend up to $500 total. And after we do spend the $500 total budget, we're going to switch over to just using the investments that we have to make more money. And our goal for this series is going to be trying to get $1,000, basically doubling our initial investments. And we're going to see if that works out. If it does, obviously this is going to be a very successful and amazing series. And if it doesn't, well, at least we tried. If you want more accurate updates on this series and you don't want to wait every two weeks to see a new episode, I'm actually going to have an Excel document that auto updates with prices that I'll actually post updates in inside of the Discord every now and then. So it's actually going to be a little bit of a good decision if you want to follow this series to join our Discord server in the link in the description below because I will have more accurate and more updated pricing on the Discord server itself. So go ahead and go check out the community. It's a really amazing community besides just that fact. And the first Discord update is going to be posted when this video goes up. I don't wanna waste too much of your time on the intro, but wait, before you start this video, I do want to go ahead and make sure you're aware of skinbay.com. You can use skinbay.com to get a very good profit margin on your investments. It's going to be a lot more efficient to buy on skinbay than it is going to be if you wanted to just buy on the Steam community market. You can make a much better profit margin off of skinbay with your cash. And I also have a ref link. So if you go to the description below, you can check out my ref link. And if you use it, that does support me quite a lot. Thank you so much for deciding to use it if you do. Go ahead and at me on Twitter and I will let you know what I think of your purchases. With that aside though, I do thank you for watching this video and I thank you for using my skin bay ref link if you decide to. And let's get straight into this brand new series. When you enter a brand new RPG, the most important thing is obtaining a trusty dagger sidearm to start your adventure off. And what's the most trusty sidearm in CSGO? Well, it's the USP, of course. This one-tapping pistol round winning machine is going to be our first choice for an investment here, and especially because there is a legendary hero out of all of the USPs that we'll be looking into. I guess hero is the wrong word, though. This is more of a villainous or infamous USP, one that has quite a history behind it. If you guessed the USP Orion, well, you're absolutely right for our first investment choice. USP Orion is also pretty aptly named. Orion is the hunter in Greek mythology, and that's actually pretty accurate because we're hunting for profit. So, why the USP Orion? Well, the USP Orion is actually one of those skins that has been anticipating a rise for a very long time now. However, with time, there kind of has to exist a point where the equilibrium supply and demand hits a point that can boost the USP Orion to new heights. Luckily, the USP Orion has been removed from the Huntsman case for a very long time now, which means it is only available in trade-ups. This is, of course, due to the infamous Howl art-stealing endeavor that happened so many years ago, and the USP Orion was sort of one of the side effects of it. It is, of course, still available in trade-ups, which is why its price hasn't skyrocketed all too much, but I do think this year is going to be a very good one for the USP Orion, especially one in factory new condition with a decent deduct. While looking to start this adventure off right, I went ahead and purchased an Arcana on CS.Deals for around $17.50 USD. I then took that Arcana and put it on buff.163 for about 120 yuan. I then sold it pretty easily and went to purchase a USP Orion. Unfortunately though, once I got the Orion in my inventory and I went to use it to update the prices on my Excel document, since I have it auto-updating, I went ahead and tested the USP Orion by placing it on the Steam Marketplace for a few cents under the lowest price so I could see if the price actually updated on the Excel spreadsheet. And unfortunately for me, someone actually decided to buy the USP Orion while I was waiting for the prices to update on CSGO Stash, which would therefore confirm that the prices actually update on the spreadsheet. 
Obviously, all I had to do, though, was just wait for the other prices to update to actually see if this worked, but it actually kind of made this slow down quite a fair amount. However, I went ahead and used the money that I got from the USP Orion sale to just simply purchase another one off of the Steam Marketplace, and all was well. I just lost out on a few stickers. So we've officially purchased our first investment for this episode, the USP Orion, hoping that this starts it off in a good spot. We've spent a total of $17.50 USD, and let's move on to our next investment for this episode. Every now and then, in an RPG, you will encounter a foe that is simply too powerful for your character to best. When this happens, you will usually die and meet Death himself. Death is an important and terrifying concept in RPGs, so this next investment had to be Death-themed, of course. Too bad this guy doesn't look very terrifying. Side note, to be honest, I'm not really sure why I'm following an RPG storyline here, but it's kind of a good theme, so I might as well stick with it for this episode, at least. Of course, we're talking about the M4A4 Hellfire. This is obviously that fat little demon that's going to bring us good profits, hopefully. And this item is going to be a good investment, mostly because no one's really opening the Hydra case anymore. It's just too expensive and not really a profitable venture to open it up. And it's also one of those pinks that's a little bit too risky to do a trade-up for and actually justify the outcome. That being said, the price on it is looking very, very good right now. It actually dropped down to a price of around $40 on the Steam Community Marketplace, and I went ahead and was able to purchase it on buff for around $28 USD. To actually get this buff balance to buy this M4A4, I went ahead and bought some Arcanas and CS deals like I did for the Orion, and then sold them on buff for a total balance of around 240 Chinese Yuan. A little bit of a side note here, if you do want a more comprehensive idea of how to use the buff website to try and get more efficient values on your investments, then go ahead and check out my buff guide that I posted a little while back. It's updated and explains everything you need to know about buff, but in general, if you do want to use a third-party website, I actually would recommend SkinBay for this actual purpose. SkinBay is going to have a lot easier to use UI, and it's going to be better for if you don't want to lose money on fees. Aside from that, of course, the M4A4 Hellfire is going to be a great addition to our portfolio, and of course, added it onto the Excel spreadsheet. So now I want to go ahead and take a moment to look at our leftover currency, our sort of marginal leftover currency. Basically, this is going to be all the currency that is on different sites that was not used when transferring balance to buff and that whole kind of thing. This marginal currency I'm now going to use to buy a few smaller things on each of these sites, like some gold web foils, for example, to kind of get some more modernized investments. So let's go purchase some cheap investments and spend this $20 USD. I went ahead and used the Steam balance to go ahead and purchase a couple of our first modern investments, these two steps the Webstuck Hollow and the Gold Web Foil. I bought the Gold Web Foil for a little higher than I was anticipating and a little higher than I was hoping, but it's okay. It's a kind of a small price to pay out of our total budget in order for something that could be a potentially a very good investment once that supply bottleneck hits at the end of the operation. I went ahead and added these two stickers to our Excel spreadsheet, and now let's move on to the next shop, which is CS.Deals. I first decided to take a look at the SG553 Ultraviolet. However, this was a little bit too expensive on CS.Deals, so I went ahead and skipped. After shopping around a bit more, I decided to just go ahead and hit that highest discount button on CS.Deals, which allowed me to actually find a very good purchase here, which was these Flipside Atlanta 2017 capsules for the autographs. And these were actually a very good idea to buy. The profit margins on them were pretty insane. Even if I got one of the worst autograph outcomes, I would still actually break even. So if we go ahead and open up three of these, I'm pretty sure we're actually going to make a decent amount of profits and have a bit more steam balance to spend. I know that technically this isn't really investing and rather it's actually gambling on the outcome of the capsule, but because the profit margins were safe, I can kind of still consider it an investment, especially because it's actually better to have the autographs themselves rather than the capsule. So let's go ahead and open up three of these. We're looking for the electronic autograph, which is about $9 on the Steam market right now. However, we're probably only going to get about six out of it. After opening up these three capsules, our results were two of the Markov stickers, which actually go for about $3.20 on the Steam Marketplace, so that's about $6.40, which already puts us in profit if you consider the Steam Wallet balance. We also ended up getting the worst possible outcome, of course, which was the Waylander sticker, and that one is actually worth about $1.50, so we kind of broke even on that one. Overall, though, pretty good. We did make a decent bit of profit there. Because these are sort of old autographs and for a team that's not really active anymore, I'm actually just going to go ahead and hold on to them and not sell them on the Steam Marketplace. With the remaining $1.80 that I had on CS.Deals, I purchased one of the only Gambit Gaming Hollows that they had for cheap on there for London 2018. I think this one has one of the best hollow effects of all stickers in the game right now, so it's a pretty cool one to pick up. And I also went ahead and got a Phoenix case 
which was obviously one of the best cases in CSGO of all time, and probably one that's going to get us a nice little margin, a little bit, you know, a couple cents here and there profits over time. With that out of the way, the only thing to do now is to spend the remainder of our buff balance and also the remainder of our CS.money balance on some cheap little investments here and there. I went ahead and just went to CS.money because that was a pretty straightforward process to actually spend our $1.70 that we had left over, and that was basically just to lose the least amount of money. And I went ahead and started on the auction house on CS.money because that is going to be where the best prices are. And pretty momentarily, I found a SSG 08 Abyss with a 0.99 float, very high float, for only about a dollar. So that was a pretty good deal, and I went ahead and bid on it. And after only about a minute, I was able to actually secure it. With the remainder of the money, with the 62 cents that we had after buying that SSG 08, I went ahead and got a Quantum Bellator Fire non hollow sticker and a Tyloo autograph sticker from Kato 19. And I also got a SG Redstone just because it's a new item and it could probably increase a little bit in value over time, even though it's pretty cheap. And I think the Quantum Bellator Fire is actually going to be our biggest gainer from this collection of stuff that I bought with the leftover funds because it is a pretty old sticker, kind of a weird one, and just sort of a one-off. The Tyler sticker, of course, it's new, it's, you know, Cat of 19, those autographs are only going to rise. So far, pretty happy with the outcome of our leftover funds, and let's go ahead and end this episode off by buying some stuff on Buff. After not too long of searching, I went ahead and bought three items on Buff for the remainder of my balance, which was an M4A1S Nightmare Well-Worn, and then two USP Guardians in Factory New Condition. The reason about the Guardians is because they trade up to a minimal wear AK Redline, and they're also from the Phoenix case, which is on the rise recently, so I think they're going to actually be pretty good as part of our portfolio. And the reason I bought the M41S Nightmare is because I think at some point in this year the M41S may get a buff to the game, just because it isn't being used very much and they might want to introduce it into the meta to kind of keep things fresh, especially with Play Valorant coming out which means that there could be a little bit of competition there and a little bit more incentive for CSGO to step up their metagame. So I think that is a possibility and it's just kind of a good preemptive buy, a little bit of an unconfirmed sort of speculative one, which I don't really like doing, but it's not that costly, so it's something that we can kind of do with extra leftover balance. With that out of the way, we now come to the conclusion of this video, which means I'm going to show you what our current investment storage unit looks like, and that's about on screen right now. Keep in mind some of the items are not in the storage unit because they're on trade hold, so they're being held on site. And then obviously this is the Excel document that I talked about earlier, and this has updating prices, which I'm going to add after I finish this video up. And this document is going to show you everything that I have invested in so far. And if you want to learn how to make a document like this, there's a short little tutorial in my Discord server, but if you do have enough support for something like this being a video, then let me know in the comments below, and I might be able to turn a investment uh, little guide to making these Excel spreadsheets into an actual video. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate the support on the first episode of the series. Really hope this does well. I put a lot of work into editing it and figuring out what I want to buy and doing that whole side of the actual video. And make sure you subscribe to my channel to see more content in the future, and make sure you don't miss an episode of this series. Be sure to leave a like on the video for the work put into it, and to show me that you care about the series. And of course, be sure to join my Discord server in the description below, along with following my Twitter account for more live updates. Also again, be sure to check out Skin Bay and use my link in the description below. And with that being said, that's going to cut the video off for today. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video and taking your time to watch it with me. I will see you all next time. Peace.